Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden, and I just had a birthday the other day. I am now 54 years old, so I thought I would do my annual vegan update video because this is my 24th year of being a vegan. So what has happened in this past year? I haven't made a video in six months, so many of you are not aware of the experiments and projects that I have been engaged in. And I apologize for that. It's been difficult for me to get my words out. <laughs> I started an experiment last year, maybe in February. I was injured as a runner in late 2020. So I started cross-country skiing uh, in early 2021 and found that it was incredibly difficult because I did not have the upper body strength or endurance. I had done nothing for my upper body for many, many years. So even though I was quite fit cardiovascularly as a runner, I was a terrible skier. I have a history of skiing. I skied in high school and I raced for two years in college, but then I stopped. I did a little bit of coaching in the early 90s, but uh, I wasn't really skiing much myself. I was mostly teaching people how to ski. So huge gap in time from me being a racer and uh, starting up again in 2021. And I thought, you know what? I would like to see if I can develop some kind of ski racing fitness again. And I gave myself a year to do that. What would happen if I trained as a skier for a year? And part of that came from me being injured in a way that wasn't healing. Uh, I gave it a lot of time off and uh, it's the perineal tendon in my left ankle and it just wasn't getting better. So, okay, let's take a break from running. Still doing lots of elliptical machine and my treadmill at a very steep incline. But what if we train as a skier? So I really immersed myself in everything related to cross country or Nordic skiing, not alpine skiing, and became absolutely obsessed with it. So in the course of my study, I started learning about the key players in the world of cross-country skiing. And someone that I really took a liking to was Ivo Niskanen from Finland. He's a multi-time gold medalist in several different Olympics and just an all-around nice guy. Uh, and I love the way he skis. Anyway, I watched a bunch of interviews with him and he mentioned that he trains between 900 and 1,000 hours a year, every year. That's almost three hours a day, 365 days a year. And I got this thought in my mind, what would happen if I attempted to train like that for one year? First of all, at the age of 53 at that point, would it be possible? Could I handle that volume of training? Uh, we're talking about the level of training for an Olympic gold medalist, not your average World Cup cross-country skier or college cross-country skier, but the best in the world. Uh, could my body handle that? Um, especially as a vegan, a deficient vegan. And I tried it out just as an experiment with the goal to go to the world Nordic Ski Championships for Masters, uh, old people, uh, in Canmore, Alberta, the Rockies of Canada, uh, in March of this year, 2022. So that was a goal. Just let's see if I can put the training in. Let's see if I'm interested in putting a lot of training in. Let's see if I can do it without getting injured. Uh, let's get some roller skis and get out there on the pavement and risk losing all of our skin. Uh, so anyway, that's been a big part of this past year. And what I discovered is that with my gentle, compassionate approach to training, I was able to put in that volume. I finished 2021 with 938 hours of training, which is way beyond anything I have ever done in my life. So that's a little less than three hours a day. Every day, I didn't take a single day off in 2021. So that right there was extraordinary to me because consistency of training has always been a challenge for me. 
So I'm finding new ways to engage. I'm finding new ways to move through negative states. I'm finding new ways to move through just family overwhelm and people dying. These have been a couple really difficult years and some people that were very close to me died. Uh, there's been a lot going on. Uh, and to keep that level of consistent training uh, just blows my mind. And I love it. I'm excited about it. I look forward to it every day. And it hasn't stopped. I'm still engaged in that level of volume now five months after 2021 finished. I plan on doing it again in 2022. So, so much for being a deficient vegan. And what are the results? Well, I had some blood work done a few weeks ago and nothing was problematic. I'm not deficient in anything. Uh, if anything, they said, I look like I'm 25 years old. Well, all, all of the markers that showed up in their tests. Um, my body is completely transformed. Uh, I'm about 10 to 12 pounds heavier now than I was when I was just running. I have a lot more upper body muscle. Uh, I'm so much stronger. Uh, Pull-ups have become a big part of my um, workout program now because cross-country skiing benefits from that kind of motion. So uh, today, uh, I've already done 14 sets of eight pull-ups, and my goal was 15 sets of eight. Uh, but since I've already done 14 and it's early in the day, I don't know, I might do 20 sets of eight. So I'm getting very strong and building great endurance and seeing a huge shift in how I look. Uh, so I must be getting some protein somewhere. And apparently vegans don't get protein, but uh, at 54, I'm built like I was in my mid-20s. So, big shift. And best of all, I haven't been sick. I haven't been sick once. That huge volume of training and not getting sick, not getting injured, this is a big deal. Um, in the past, when I was doing high volumes of running training, I would get sick on a regular basis. Part of that is I mask up in public, I'm sanitizing my hands a lot, I'm social distancing. So that's definitely helping, but my body is not responding in a negative way to this volume of training. Something that occurred this fall, before I get into what happened at the World Championships, I jumped into some cross-country running races to participate with my team, the Central Mass Striders. Um, we have one of the best 50-plus teams in the country. So I showed up at a bunch of New England cross-country meets to support the team and also just out of curiosity and to get some, I don't know, high-intensity heart rate training in. And I ended up winning the overall New England cross-country championships age graded. So what that means is that they take your age, they run it through uh, basically a handicapping calculator based on the world record in that distance and tracking how people have aged, how the world record holders have aged, how their times slow down. So it's pretty scientific. It's not exact, but it's a good measure of how your performance at your age now would compare to someone at 25 or 28. So I ended up having the highest age grading percentage of anyone in New England, regardless of age, for cross-country running over the entire season. Uh, and the best thing is I wasn't running as training. I was just showing up to the races with 20 to 21 hours of training in my legs because of this high volume. If you're doing almost three hours a day, that's about 20 hours a week. So I'd show up to a race already having done 20 hours and I got the highest age grading. So that was pretty exciting. Um, a lot of people are shaking their heads at that. That just doesn't make sense. And then I ended up going to the World Championships in Canada in March. Uh, and I have a heart condition that I've had since childhood. Um, I've never had it officially diagnosed, so I'm in the process of doing that now. But it's most likely something to do with the AV node in my heart, which is kind of the pacemaker in your heart. It sends the signals for the muscles to contract in a rhythmic fashion. So what happens is my AV node most likely misfires and the heart rate can accelerate 
without a synchronized contraction, meaning that my heart rate can go up to 200 out of nowhere. And because it's not synchronized, different parts of the heart are beating out of sync and blood actually isn't being pumped. So the first race I did in Canada, the 30 kilometer freestyle, uh, which I thought was going to be my best race, um, I was with the lead pack of like four people, super comfortable, seven kilometers into the race and it hit. So um, my heart rate jumped through the roof. It's on Strava. You can see the data. You can see my heart rate in the 150s and then just vertical uh, up to close to 200. And uh, that was it. I tried to keep going, but you can't breathe. It's hard to walk even. So I dropped out of that race. The 10 kilometer a few days later, had to drop out of that race. I did cross the finish line, but I basically dropped out prior. Uh, just it was a formality to I needed to finish the loop. Um, so that was a disaster, and that one uh, really kind of wrecked me. So the final race of the week was a 45-kilometer freestyle, which is the race I didn't want to do to begin with because it's so long. I've never skied that far, uh, and I wasn't sure if my training was adequate for that distance. And I talked to quite a few doctors who were at the event, and they said, we don't want you to race. You're welcome to ski it just to see if you can ski 45 kilometers nonstop, uh, but do not race. Um, my friends that I was staying with, they were very concerned for me. Um, they said, we want you to start in last place and just have a good time. Don't try to race this, just ski it. Um, so they ranked me in last place because I had dropped out of the first two, so I was already in the back. And uh, I just let everybody get away, skied very comfortably, uh, very calm, kept my heart rate. I was trying to keep it under 150 beats a minute uh, so that it wouldn't get triggered. Um, 150 is super, super comfortable for me. Anyway, I eventually caught up to the lead pack which surprised me because I was skiing pretty relaxed and uh, stayed with them for 45 kilometers. <laughs> and um, it ended up being a sprint to the finish. Uh, and there was a part of me that said, I'm not racing, I'm just skiing. And it, I felt a little guilty about trying to out sprint someone because I was just kind of playing. Another part of me wanted to be on the podium, um, and it was a tricky finish. It was really narrow leading into the finish, and then you had maybe 30, 40 meters where you could actually sprint. And I came in uh, in fourth place, uh, and we sprinted, and I couldn't catch the two guys. Um, so I was fourth overall at the World Championships, eight-tenths of a second off the podium. Um, there was a, it was a fun sprint for second, third, and fourth. Anyway, that uh, is pretty exciting. Uh, number one, that I could have that result at a world championship after only a year of skiing uh, and taking it easy. So I'm very excited to continue this experiment and see what's possible next year to amp up my training to get my heart condition checked out and potentially have surgery, uh, which is likely recommended uh, an ablation surgery where they would go in with an electrode and they would actually uh, ablate or burn the nerves that are causing the misfiring. So, yeah, I've been vegan for 24 years and I am ridiculously fit right now and getting fitter. And that's exciting. So... There have been a lot of people along the way that have said that I will decline. And yeah, I am aging. I'm 54. <laughs> I'm seeing my hair gray up in a pretty rapid fashion now. My hair is thinning on top. Um, I'm a little more wrinkly than I was, but uh, physically, the rest of me is spot on. All the tests I've had recently, because I've gone through a whole battery of tests with my heart, um, and blood work, and they're like, wow, you are just ridiculously healthy. So, um, my teeth, uh, those of you that know about my dental meltdown in 2013, 14, and 15, I haven't had a cavity in years now. 
uh, because I practice normal dental hygiene. So my dental uh, dilemma has not gotten worse. Um, it's stabilized. In fact, every time I go to the dentist for a cleaning, they're amazed. They're like, wow, you, whatever you're doing, keep doing it because you've stopped whatever was happening in your mouth, uh, which was just depression and not taking care of my teeth. So that's, um, that's what this 24th year of veganism has looked like for me. Uh, and I'm excited for 25. I'm going to start a new series. Uh, and I've already filmed a lot of it. A lot of the videos that I filmed and never posted over the past six months. Um, I'm calling it Where Do I Begin? Because that's been the big challenge for me. It's like I kind of know what I want to do, but I don't know how to start. And how I get myself to train almost three hours a day now is focusing on beginnings, 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 uh, over and over throughout the day. So this is kind of the prequel to the Getting Started series. Um, and it's really changed how I approach uh, engagement uh, in the things that I do. Okay, that's enough for now. Coming soon, where do I begin? Tune in, and uh, I'll show you some of my training and my apparatus over there. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to what's to come. Please leave your comments below if you have questions about your vegan experience or curious about other things that I'm doing. And follow me on Strava if you haven't already. You get to see all my training there. I'm 100% transparent and public with what I do. All right.